The old man said, I do not cry for the money I have to pay because I can afford all this. I cry because I've been breathing God's air for 93 years, but I've never paid for it. Huh. It takes 500 euros to use the respirator in the hospital for a day. Do you know how much I owe God? Wow, I'm sorry, this is just giving me kind of chills this morning for some reason. I have never felt 
thanked God for this before. The words of this man deserve our reflection. When we breathe freely without pain and disease, no one takes the air seriously. Only when we get to a hospital, we can know that even breathing oxygen with an artificial respirator costs money. Thank God for the time you've spent all your life because you can breathe freely. Amen. Amen. Something we take for granted uh -huh. that we don't think to include that in our prayers. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for all the little things that we never even think about. The air we breathe because it's so automatic. <coughs> Praise your name, Father. Yes. Praise your Praise name, Father. Lord. We just love you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you all will, will you rise and stand for our confession? <coughs> Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we speak your word boldly. We speak your word boldly over Oasis Christian Center. Over Oasis Christian Center. We declare, we declare that we all speak the same thing. That we all speak the same thing. There is no division among us. There is no division among us. We are, we are a unified body of believers. A unified body of believers. We declare, we declare that you confirm your word, that you confirm your word with signs following. With signs following. We declare, we declare that Oasis is a place. That Oasis is a place of healing, of healing restoration, restoration, and refreshing. And refreshing. We, declare, we declare that workmen are called to Oasis, that are called to Oasis in, abundance. in abundance. We declare, we declare that the people and families of Oasis, that the people and families of Oasis are mature believers, are mature believers, not spiritual babes, not spiritual babes, tossed to and fro, tossed to and fro. We declare, we declare that Oasis is filled, that Oasis is filled with spiritually hungry people, with spiritually hungry people, faithful people, faithful people, committed people, committed people, and tithing people, and tithing people. We speak, we speak health and prosperity, health and prosperity over all our members. Over all our members. We speak, we speak strong marriages, strong marriages and divine connections. And divine connections. The people of Oasis, the people of Oasis walk in the favor of God, walk in the favor of God and the favor of man. And the favor of man. We declare, we declare promotions, promotions, raises, raises and preferences. Treatment and preferential treatment over all our members. Over all our members. Father, Father, you said in Romans 4:17. You said in Romans 4:17. Calling things that be not, calling things that be not, as though they were, as though they were. We call for, we call for 500 active members in attendance. 500 active members in attendance. We call for we call for a strong children's ministry, a strong children's ministry, a strong youth ministry, a strong youth ministry, and finances in abundance, and finances in abundance. We declare, we declare in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that the Spirit of God, that the Spirit of God draws people to Oasis, draws people to Oasis to be saved, to be saved, healed, healed delivered, delivered. And fed God's good word. And fed God's good word. And if you believe that, let's give him a shout. Let's proud him. Let's thank him. Let's roll. Thank you, Father. Praise you. Praise you. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We never want to take anything for granted that you provide for us, Father. We just give you all the glory and honor. And we love you. And we praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's turn it over to and not that it needs needs any adding to it but when she said something this morning it sparked me because my brother had just shared a testimony he has not been living for the lord but he got back to the lord hallelujah and what got me was he said 
He said, finally the Lord got through to me and was able to speak to me about something. And I want to share it with you because when he said it, I knew it was God. He said they bought a, a bed for their littlest dog. And he said, I think he told how much he paid for it. And I guess they tossed it around whether to buy that bed or not. But the uh, one morning recently, he got up and I headed out of his bedroom, I guess, toward the kitchen. And he looked down and the, the little dog was in the bed and he was thinking, boy, that dog's so cute. I'm so glad we paid for that bed because the dog is secure in it. Mm. All right. So it hit him that Jesus paid for him so that he could be secure. So this morning I say to anybody listening, Jesus has paid the ultimate price yes. and you can yes. be secure. Yes. Just call on yes. Jesus. Yes. Call on yes. Jesus. Yes. He's yes. got you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's give him another shout. Yes.
move of the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. It's time for our tithes and offering. If you'll get your tithes ready. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. If you will, if you will repeat after me, let's give our offering of thanks now. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns. Discounts and dividends, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, gifts and surprises, finding money, finding money, bills decreased, bills decreased, bills paid off, bills paid off, blessings and increase, blessings and increase, blessings and increase, blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, for meeting all my financial needs. That I may have more than enough. That I may have more than enough. To give unto the kingdom of God. To give unto the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for all your blessings. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. It is time. We're going to turn it over to our pastors. Oh, no, I'm going to remind you how to give into this ministry. That's what we're going to do right now. You may send your tithes and offerings to Oasis Christian Center at P.O. Box 246. That's Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. We are physically located at 35 Lee Road, 223. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can call our church mobile at 334-520-7538. If you've got your PayPal account set up, go to www.paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church, and you can give that way. If you like texting, you can do the text to give, 334-274-7885. If you're online, we're always online, aren't we? Go to acionlinegiving.com forward slash 4832, and you can give that way. Please visit our website, www.oasisfamilychurch.net. Click on that donate button, follow the prompts, and you can give that way. You can also download the Cash App, put in your dollar sign, Oasis Family Church, and you can give that way. Praise God. Thank you. Now, we are going to turn it over to our pastors. And it was ways to... I've got it on right now. I'm sorry. Ways to walk in greater peace. Ways to walk in greater peace. Glory. Praise God. Pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise oh, the Lord. God is in the house yes, today. Yes, yes, yes. He is awesome in this place today. And I pray he is awesome right where you're at. If you're watching by Facebook this morning. And we just want to welcome everybody here. We want to welcome everybody watching by Facebook this morning. And just thank you all for coming and joining us together with us to worship the Amen. Lord, to praise Him, to lift His name up. Amen. This Amen. morning. And we just uh, want to invite you to just enter into what God has for you today. Because God is good and He is here. Yes, he is. And He is here in an inviting, powerful way. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So before I go any farther in the service this morning, I want to just thank everybody for blessing me for Mother's Day last week. I was just beyond blessed. Y'all just went above and beyond as always. And I felt... So loved and so honored. I'm amen. telling you, I, I just I can't say enough. Thank you, sport. Amen. amen. God bless you all, and you are all awesome, a wonderful, awesome congregation. And we are so blessed to have you. Amen. 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 So before I turn it over to Pastor this morning, I want to just declare some things over you. You ready for a blessing? Yes. 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 Praise yes. God. Yes. To just receive. I declare in the name of Jesus. That you are a chosen generation. Yes. You are a royal priesthood. Yes. You are reigning in life as kings on yes. the earth. You are sanctified, consecrated, and separated yes. from the yes. world. 
I declare you are healed. Jehovah Rapha has taken sickness and disease away from the midst of you. You have a sound mind and body. Yes. You are energized, revitalized, transformed, renewed, restored powerhouses for God. The healing power of God continually surrounds you, keeps you, and preserves your entire system. Amen. I declare you are redeemed from debt and poverty Amen. and lack. Yes. Your household is blessed yes. and living yes. under an open heaven. Yes. The blessings of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it. I declare you are increasing more and more, and wealth and riches are in your house. You are the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. You sow bountifully and you bring a bountiful harvest on every seed sown. I declare everything you put your hands to prosper. I command finances and yes. all resources yes. to come forth now yes. without delay. Yes. I declare Thank the wealth of the wicked, the yes. treasures of darkness yes. and the hidden riches and secret places yes. come to you now. Yes. I declare the supernatural word yes. of God yes. is prevailing yes. in every yes. area of yes. your life. Praise you are an overcomer. Yes. You yes. are victorious. Yes. Yes. God always yes. calls yes. you to triumph. Yes. Yes. your neighbor and smile at your neighbor, point at your neighbor and say, I came, I came to, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, I declare I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready, Are you ready? To, receive to receive God's good word, God's good word this, day. this day. And I declare, I declare I'll never, I'll never, 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 ever, ever be the same again, again in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Glory to God. <laughs> Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over the rest of this service this day. Father, we just thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened according to the hope of your calling. We thank you for revelation knowledge. We thank you that the word of the Lord will have free course in our midst. We thank you for strong utterance and strong anointing, and that your people make a strong drawing on the anointing of God. We thank you for answers coming in your presence this day. Holy Spirit, preach to me, teach to me. Help me to say what I should say and leave off what I should leave off. Lead me, guide me, consciously and unconsciously, to say what I should say. And Father, I thank you that we're preaching and teaching your word, and you said signs and wonders follow your word anytime it is preached or taught. And Father, we are preaching it and teaching it today, so we're believing for signs and wonders to follow your word this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ask if you will to get your Bibles and go to Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to start with verse number 6. And I'm going to be reading in the contemporary English, but you're going to see this in a lot of different translations today, as always. Um, but we're going to start out in contemporary English. Don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. With thankful hearts, offer up your prayers and requests to God. Then, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God will bless you with peace that no one can completely understand. And this peace will control the way you think and feel. Now, we're talking about or teaching about walking in a greater peace today. Now, myself personally, I'm not where I want to be in this. I, I walk in a great peace, but I want greater. Amen. There's greater out there, Amen. and that's what I'm shooting for, and that's what I'm striving for. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to recognize that the enemy is every day trying to steal our peace. Right. I mean, he does it through people. He does it through circumstances. He does it through bills. He does it however he can do it. Any loophole he can find, any way in this earth that he can do it, he'll do it. Now, and we're all a little different. Now, what, what steals your peace may not steal my peace. Uh -huh. A bad doctor's report may steal your peace, and it doesn't steal my peace. 
A bad financial report may steal my peace and does steal your, your peace. Mm -hmm. So you understand we're all different. Right. And we've got to recognize that. Now, I'm going to give you five keys today of how to walk in greater peace. The first one that I'm going to give you, and I give you this because of my own self, because I have to do this. I have to apply this all the time. The first key is pray about it quickly. Mm -hmm. Now, anytime, what I've found is if something's bothering you, a lot of times you won't even realize or recognize that something's bothering you. It's just rolling in your mind. It's just rolling, and, and that thought just keeps going, and, and you don't even recognize it. I mean, you might be a person of, of prayer, and you pray about a lot of stuff, but you don't even recognize those thoughts. They're just like on a little train, and they're just going around and around, and you're actually worried or very overly concerned about something. And that should be our key. We really should be key before that. But it should that should be a definite key, a stopping point. Right there, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray right now because I need the peace of God and I need it to keep my heart and my mind. Because uh -huh. if that peace doesn't keep my heart and my mind, I can get way out of whack. And we all can. We can get out of sorts. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants us out of sorts. He wants us upset and and just in fear and doubt and unbelief. So if I'm not careful, I'm, I'm speaking about pastor here. If I'm not careful, I'll get over into that worry. Amen. But if I pray about it quickly, if I'll, if I'll take it, if I'll do it first, if I'll just jump on it, right? Right when that, that you know, that bird nut just, just hits me, if I'll just pray right then, it'll unload it. And then the peace will, will change. I'll receive the peace in the place of that worry. And... I'm going to read this same scripture in the message. I really like this. Uh, this is Philippians 4, 6, and 7. This is in the message. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let that sink in. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of worrying, pray. Amen. Let petitions and praises shape your worries Hallelujah. into prayers. And before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come Hallelujah. and settle you down. Hallelujah. And for me, that's exactly the way this works. When I start praying about something that and it's, it's, it's starting to get me, it's starting to burden me. And when I start, it's starting to try to overwhelm me. But when I start praying about it, it does. God's peace just comes in and I can just feel it start settling. I, I can pray over people and I can feel the peace of God sometimes just as I'm praying, I can feel the peace of God just come in and settle over them and over their situations of their circumstances, and I can feel it on my own self as it settles me down Amen. in the, in the peace of God. Amen. Amen. So we need to, there again, to walk in greater peace, we need to pray about everything. And like I said, if you worry about it, let that be your cue. If that needs to be the cue, let that be the cue. The second you start worrying about it, pray. I, really, we shouldn't wait for that cue, but we know we, we run past it, so we need to do it right then for sure. Amen. Because um, irrational thoughts and irrational fears will come against your mind and we have to pray quickly anything that concerns us everyday problems they'll pile up because we haven't prayed about them so it, it seems overwhelming even little things something little may set me off and 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 maybe little to you but it's big to me that's right and we've got to recognize that and, and have grace for each other and what we're going through Amen. um now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this sarcastically. I, I don't like to teach sarcastically. I don't do it. I'm doing it for an effect today. I'm actually doing it on, on purpose. See, a lot of times sarcasm comes out of the abundance of heart. People are just sarcastic because that's their nature. They're hateful and they're sarcastic. They're, they they dispute sarcasm. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put some parentheses up here, and I'm going to put it in, in the in the in those sarcastically. I'm going to do it on purpose. I'm not doing, I'm doing this for, for teaching to open our eyes to it. I've had people tell me many times, uh, well, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I've done everything I do. I, I know to do it. I ain't got peace. Well, uh, maybe there's something you left off. No, I prayed. I've, I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Everything on my end, I've done it. Okay? And here's my sarcasm. Here it comes. I'm not, this is not off the cuff. This is how I plan this. Okay, Einstein. <laughs> Let me, let me make this plain to you. Right. The fault is not on God. That's right. The fault is with us. Uh -huh. The fault is not on the on the right. sending end. 
The fault is on the receiving end. That's right. It's Amen. our end that's messed up. Yeah. God's not messed up. God's perfect. Amen. It's not God's that's got the problem. It's us that has the problem. That's right. If we're not getting the answer, we're short circuiting the answer on our end. Maybe I'm not hearing him clearly. Maybe I'm not hearing him directly. But it's definitely not God's fault. Amen. Can we all agree to that? Yes. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank y'all for putting up with my little sarcasm. <laughs> Okay, number two, if we're going to walk in great, greater peace, set the atmosphere. Control the atmosphere. Now, in your home, maybe you want to walk in greater peace in your home. One of the ways you're going to do that is, okay, now uh, the scripture says, I'm getting ahead of myself. The scripture says in Isaiah 32 and 8, my people shall dwell in peaceable habitations. Mm -hmm. So our home should be just full of peace. Um, that's the word. So I need to control the atmosphere in my home. Amen. Now, now let me um, let me get in this soft spot right here. I can't allow fussing and arguing and getting in strife. Amen. One thing I can't afford it because mm -hmm. you get into a lot of strife, Amen. you lose your peace a whole bunch. It affects your finances. Amen. Hang on, you don't really even realize it, but I tell you, that's a spiritual law. There, it's connected. Peace and finances are connected. So if we get over into strife, we get over fussing, we get over arguing, we get over debating, I'm telling you, we are we are cutting ourselves off our nose in spite of our face yeah. about our finances. It's going to affect our finances. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to affect every area, but I'm telling you, it's going to, it's going to play a big deal in finances. It's going to put more pressure on us. So in our house, our own house, um, we got to... It may seem normal to have fussing and fighting and arguing and all that stuff because maybe you grew up like that. Mm -hmm. But that's not normal according to God and his word. Amen. Amen. Can you understand that? That's not what he's saying is normal. Amen. What we say is normal is not Amen. normal according to God. And we got to line up with God. Amen. Not what Amen. feels normal to us. Not what we grew up in. Not how we perceive this thing. Amen. Here's the word of God. This Amen. is what we got to line up to. If we want to be blessed to a higher level, if we want more peace in our life, we got to line up to what he says, Amen. not what we think he says. Amen. Amen. So it may seem normal to you to do that because that's the atmosphere that you grew up in. And a lot of us did. But that's not the atmosphere that God is saying that we're supposed to have in our houses. Amen. You can set the atmosphere in your house in many different ways. One of them is by music you put in your house. I mean, there's some things that produce peace in you and some things that don't. And I'm not, I'm not you know, opening that can of worms. I'm not going to decide for you. You've got the Holy Spirit. You let the Holy Spirit tell you what produces peace in you and, and in your house. Um, in your own house, you control whether you raise your voice or not. You decide not to allow arguments and disagreements to become a bad habit in your house. Let that one sink in for me. Amen. Because Amen. sometimes we just we, we do this stuff and, and, and then we get in a habit or a cycle, a bad habit and a bad cycle, and it opens the door to the devil. And it's, and it's us, and we just got to break out of that bad habit and that bad cycle. We, we, we make it an everyday occurrence, and you're going to have disagreements. I understand that. There's going to be differences of opinion. I understand that. But it doesn't have to be hateful, and that doesn't have to be crazy. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. You don't have to not speak to somebody for three days. All right. Say it again. Hang on now. Yeah. Hang on. Grab the, grab the thing on the bus, because the bus is going to hit some curves. <laughs> Okay, we're in the curb section right now. And I'm telling you, grab the thing. Before you get swung out of your seat, go ahead and, and grab hold of the Because oh, it's getting a little curvy right now. So many people, good Christian people, have allowed themselves to establish patterns and bad habits of fussing and arguing all the time. And let me say this. That's not God's will. He wants us to live in greater peace on a higher level. Mm -hmm. So there's things in our house that we're going to have to pray about more and talk about sometimes less. Right. Hang on. Right. It didn't do you no good to rehash something 40 years ago that you already rehashed 40 years ago. Right. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. Your child spilled the milk 40 years ago and they walk in, yeah, I remember when you spilled that milk, shut up. <laughs> you just you just agreeing with the devil. You're starting you're stirring up stuff like the devil would stir up stuff. That's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. 
I'll sit down in a minute. He's <laughs> gone. Okay? We said how to walk in greater peace. We said pray about it quickly. Control the atmosphere. Feed on something. The third one is feed on something that produces peace in you. Now, <clears throat> something that feeds your spirit, not grieves your spirit. Um, okay, uh, John 14 and 27 and Amplified says, Stop allowing the devil to, it doesn't say the devil, stop allowing the devil to steal your peace all the time. That's, that was my paraphrase. I'll give you the real one in just a second. Um, okay. I watched this, uh, this cooking show. It, I don't remember the name of it. it just, we just started getting it. It's by Joanna Gaines, and it's the Magnolia mm -hmm. Network or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, her and her husband build houses and stuff, and now she's doing this, this cooking show. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, now I'm talking about me. I'm talking about pastor. I'm, 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 I'm just re really just preaching, here, here I am. Okay? <laughs> Big, easy target. Okay? <laughs> um, I enjoy the real out of watching these cooking shows. I mean, it just, I like it. I know Jesse doing his head, me and Jesse. Two real men. Yes, I do. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
For I am the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. See, those two scriptures, Isaiah 41 and 10, 41 and 13, they just are so embedded in my spirit, man. I let them pop out anytime I get into fear. I, I just I let them just come out. I, I just if I'm not in the car by myself or something, that, that those scriptures are gonna come out. I'm gonna be saying them out loud. I'm gonna be meditating those scriptures. Because they they feed my spirit man who is the real me. Yeah. They yeah. feed my yeah. spirit. And, yeah. and as we learned from Patty just a few weeks ago, it'll make your spirit man stand up when you're feeding yourself on the word of God. Now, it amazes me that some people are so careful about what they eat. And that's a good thing. I'm not knocking that. I, I think we all need more of that. God knows I need more of that. I need to be more careful about what I eat. But at the same time, okay, now, don't take this wrong, but they don't pay attention to the spirit man. They, they do everything for the natural man, the outside man, but they don't do anything about feeding their spirit man. And, and, and they, they wouldn't touch a breadstick to save your life. They don't touch this or touch that because that's going to affect the outer man. And 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 I'm not and I'm not knocking that. I'm not, I promise you, I'm not I'm not belittling that in any way. But at the same time, the most important part that is important, but it's not the most important. The most important part is the inside man, the real man, the spirit man who's in the inside of us. And we got to be careful what we feed that spirit man. What are we feeding on that's going to help him? Now, personally, I was feeding myself too much news, Amen. and it was affecting me. Amen. And that's the honest truth. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm not. That's not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm telling you, me. It made me too negative. It made me too, too hopeless. Yes. Uh -huh. The more I fed on it, the yes. more hopeless I got. Amen. Um, now I'll read headlines, and you know I found out you can read a few headlines. And you know everything is going on because it's all the same old stuff. It repeats all the same. Uh -huh. I mean, it seems like it's on a loop. All the bad news. And I don't have to feel, feed on that That's for right. hours at a, uh, at a time Amen. a day. Amen. Amen. So I feel better and my spirit man is stronger. I hear God's voice clearer. And now I have more peace in my spirit because I changed what I was feeding my spirit. So... First Chronicles 22 and 18 says, Is not the Lord your God with you, and has he not given you peace on every side? That's a good scripture. Um, Philippians 4 and 6. I think I'm supposed to stop. I, I think you're supposed to come up. I got plenty more. I got 20 more pages. But I feel like that uh, it's time. on the word. Fill up those places where the enemy's trying to put that fear and doubt and stuff in there. Fill it up with God. Fill it up with the peace of God. Um, ways to walk in greater peace. And um, I'm going to start in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 10 in the Amplified Bible. It says, For the mountains may be removed and the hills may shake, but my loving kindness will not be removed from you nor will my covenant of peace be shaken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Mm -hmm. Now, I love that. It says that we have a covenant of peace. Amen? Now, the, the, the enemy doesn't want us to remember that, you know. Right. But, you know, Jesus paid a great price for our peace. Yes, he did. Amen? Peace belongs to us. Amen. It's paid in full. Amen? Amen? Peace belongs to us through Jesus Christ. And a covenant, it, the meaning of covenant is a binding agreement. Mm -hmm. It's a promise, a pledge, a binding contract. So we have a binding contract with the Lord, amen, to have a covenant of peace. That is good news to amen. me, amen? amen? You know, I can call on that peace whenever I need it, whenever the enemy's coming amen. against my mind or coming against any area of my life to try to steal peace from me. I can say, wait a minute, I have a covenant of peace, and I'm calling on the Lord for that peace, amen, amen. to overcome whatever's going on in my life. 
But you know, the enemy, he works very hard. He's uh, working overtime to try to steal that peace from us. Uh -huh. And that's everybody. You're not by yourself. Right. But you know, we have to work that much harder. We can't just loll it around. That's you know, right. The enemy is trying to do everything he can. He's, he's pulled out all the weapons he's got to try to steal that peace from your life. Well, you've got to pull out the weapons of your warfare, amen, amen. amen. that God has given you to come against the enemy right. that is trying to steal your peace, especially in the middle of, a, of the storms of life. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. In Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3, and this is the Amplified Version, it says, and Pastor brought this scripture out too, you will keep in perfect peace and in perfect and constant peace. I love that. Yeah. He will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you, focused on the Lord in both inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. Now I'm putting my trust in the Lord. I'm, put, I'm making the Lord my refuge. Uh -huh. I'm looking to Him. I'm not looking to any uh, uh, outside realm here on earth. I'm Amen. looking to my Heavenly Father. Amen. I'm looking to the Prince of Peace as my help. Uh -huh. I'm putting my trust in Him. And I love this. It says, in confident expectation. Yes, I'm in a storm right now. I'm in a war right now. I'm having all these things come against me. But I have confident expectation that my God is going to come on the scene, that he yes. is my refuge, yes. that he is my helper. Hallelujah. Amen. This, and this is the key. When you're going through a battle, when you're going through a storm uh, in life, you know, it's the key to keep your mind focused right. on the Lord. Right. Because the enemy's trying to get your focus on what he's doing. Right. Get your focus on the problem. That's Amen. Right. But we've got to keep our minds focused on the Lord. You know, yeah. our, our minds can be a battleground for the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah. battles are won or lost. Through our, through our mind, through what we put our focus on, what we put our, our attention to the most. So we want our full attention, mostly we want uh, to put our focus on the Lord, amen? amen. Especially during the hard times, especially during a, a struggle or a battle or a storm in life. You know, uh, put on some loud music. Uh, Christian music, something that's going to build your spirit man up. Amen. You know, uh, uh, get you some of the scriptures that really speak, minister strength to you, Amen. peace to you, you know. Uh, surround, sur your, surround yourself with, with uh, preaching. You know, there's so much good stuff on the internet yes. now. Surround yourself with ministers that will put positive word on the Amen. inside of you. Yes. Amen. 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 Not those that, you know, they're, gonna, they're, they're preaching that, you know, you're never going to me uh, measure up. We don't want to hear that kind of preaching, amen. Right, if right. Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, you've measured up. That's amen. Right. Amen. Right. amen. So keep your uh, surroundings focused on the Lord. We keep our peace when we focus on Him. And we lose our peace when we focus on the problem. Right. You know, the problem can get so big in our minds and so overwhelming in our minds. But, you know, but the Word of God is more powerful. It's quick, it's sharp, it's powerful, amen. It is a two-edged sword, and it is a mighty weapon that we use against the enemy, what he is trying to do. So we've got to work. We've got to strive to keep our peace, amen. Right. amen. Strive, work at it. Luke 8 and 22 through uh, 26 of the Amplified Bible says, now one of those days, Jesus and his disciples got into a boat. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake, which was the Sea of Galilee. Jesus saw it as a lake, I guess. So they set out, but as they were sailing, he fell asleep. And a fierce gale of wind swept down as if through a wind tunnel, and the lake and they began to be swamped, 
and were in great danger. They came to Jesus and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are about to die. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging violent waves, and they ceased, and it became calm, a perfect peacefulness. I love that. Yes. A perfect peacefulness. Yes. That's where I want to live. Amen? That's right. Amen. That's right. And he said to them, where is your faith, your confidence in me? Where is that confidence? Amen? They were afraid and astonished, saying to one another, who then is this? That he commands even the winds and the sea to obey him. So then they sailed to the country of uh, Gerasenes, which is the uh, east of Galilee. And so, you know, here they were. They're in a boat with the Prince of Peace. Yes. And uh, he's asleep. You know, he's not, he's not worried about anything going on. So, you know, uh, this storm comes up. You know, but they, they've got the Prince of Peace right there with them. You know, they have seen Jesus do mighty miracles, great things. Are, you know, uh, they, he, they've seen Jesus raise the dead back to life. They've seen him open the blinded eyes. They've seen him cleanse the leper, you know, heal the lame. And they've seen all these mighty miracles. But here they've got the uh, mighty miracle working worker right there in the boat with them, and they're like, we're, we're going to perish, we're going to die, we are in great danger. Well, you know, sometimes life brings great danger right. our That's way, right. doesn't That's it? Right. But in the middle of the storm, you know, they lost their focus on the power of God. That's they right. lost their focus on who they were serving, amen, who they had right there with them. Wow. You know, but they lost that focus, took their eyes off of Jesus, and put their eyes on the problem. Put their eyes on the storm. And that's where we mess up, mess up so much is putting our focus on the storm, on the problem. Now, remember, Isaiah 26 and 3 said, He will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. When our minds is stayed on the Lord, winds might be coming against you, waves might be trying to overtake you, all these things might be trying to take you, uh, your peace away from you, but those who will keep their mind on the Lord, amen, those who will know that God is their refuge, that he is going to, he is the deliverer today, amen, amen, now your boat might be your business, it might be your health. It might be your job. It might be your financial situation. Your boat might be your family. It might be your marriage. It might be your children. Whatever the situation is you're going through today, the good news is Jesus is in the boat with you. Yeah. 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 And you're Lord. not in the boat alone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Which the enemy would try to want, uh, want you to stop uh -huh. focus on things, but you're not in the boat alone today. You might feel like uh, those disciples did that day. You might feel like, you know, uh, there's fierce winds coming against your boat. You might feel like, you know, you're being swamped with waves. Uh, the waves, you might feel like they're just about to turn the boat over. But Jesus is in the boat with you. You are in good hands. You are the one that is a great and mighty God. Amen. You are with him right there. He's not leaving you. He's not forsaking you. He hasn't jumped out of the boat. Amen. He's right there with you. You might feel like you're being swamped by this wave. You might feel like, you know, they're crashing against your boat and you're about to sink. Well, you're not going to sink. Amen. You're not going to go under because Jesus the miracle worker, the mighty God is right there with you. Jesus is saying to you in life, no matter what place you're in in your life, he's saying, let's go, let's go to the other side. Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's go to the other side. Yes. You and Jesus yes. go to the other side. Amen. He's not going to leave you in the middle of the, no, the uh, ocean. The Amen. He's going to go all the way Hallelujah. through with yes. you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. right there with you. He is in control of the situation. Amen? There's no storm greater or too great 
that Jesus cannot handle. Amen? He's a good God, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's an yes, awesome he is. God this morning. He's got you right by the hand. You know, we see that uh, poem that, you know, the footstep, the footprints, you uh -huh. know, where you see the, you, you just see the footprints, but you know, Jesus is carrying you through that. That's right. Amen. He's carrying you. We don't always see it through the middle of the storm, but when the storm is over, we can look back yeah. and say, but God. Oh, yes. Amen. But God. He brought me through. He made a way where there seemed to be no way. Uh, he brought the miracle to me. He brought me out of that physical battle that I was in. He, he, he brought me through that mental uh, turmoil that I was going through. He delivered me from this situation. He set me free over in this situation. Amen. Amen. It's Jesus that is doing it. Amen. Amen. We just have to walk by faith and not by sight. We've just got to have our trust and our confidence in Him. Amen. No matter what it looks like. Amen. You might, it, you might feel like you're going under today. Jesus has got you right there. Uh -huh. He's right there with you, amen? Yes. Right in the middle of the storm. Yes. Keep your mind. Keep your mind. Stay on the Lord. He's bringing you through. The Prince of Peace is right there in the boat with you. Oh, he knows exactly what you're going through. Amen. He knows the exact situation that you're facing today. It's not too hard for him. Amen. Amen. Not too hard for him. Amen. Be ready to receive this morning what God's got for you. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. You wouldn't be here today if God had not delivered you from storms. Uh huh. Amen. That you've already gone through. Gone through battles, storms, difficulties, uh, financial uh, situations. Situations in your family. He, he's never left you. Amen. He's Amen. always right there Amen. with you. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise and I'm going to end right there too, Pastor. He'll come up. Praise God. And I just want to pray over you today. Amen. Just let's see. I just pray the blood of Jesus Christ over each and every person here in the sanctuary and those that are watching by Facebook or whatever form of media, if you're watching this service by today, I just plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your situation. I bind every uh, attack of the enemy coming against you. I bind those attacks, those lying spirits coming against your mind in the name of Jesus. And I declare, I decree in the name of Jesus that you are, are free. I declare in the name of Jesus that you are coming through victoriously. You're coming through, and Jesus, thank you that you are right there with them. Yeah. You are right there lifting them up, right. Father God. Right there when they feel like they're, they're about to go under, Father God, uh, that the waves are about to overtake them. You are pulling them up, Father God. You are bringing them up. You are bringing them through, and you are bringing them out, Father God. Bringing them out victorious, better than they were before. And we thank you, Father God, that you are the mighty God. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that there is nothing too hard for you. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. 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 Anybody? You got anything else? <laughs> I don't. Okay, that is closing out the service this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for joining us today. And uh, just take this forward throughout your week when the, the enemy tries to come against your mind in any area of your life uh, that Jesus is there with you. He's in the boat. He has not left you. He's carrying you through. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, I was like a sponge today. Sitting yeah. there checking that out. I don't know about you, but how many times do you know it's a situation you need to pray about, but you just do it in your mind. You don't, you don't speak it out. You don't speak it out. And that's what I'm going to make sure that I make a difference with. I want to speak out my prayers. I want to petition the Lord. I want to 
we, me and you, Steve, we are going to build up our prayer life together. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And just one more thing. Pastors, buy Pastor Sharon some chocolate, anything for you to get in the car, because you call her a dog liar. <laughs> Don't forget, Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Be with us. Thank you for joining us. 